Larry with Seven Sage Law School Prep and another stick figure exam tip. This one's called Save Real Exams for Last. Slight edit here. I mean to say Save Real Practice Exams for Last. By which I mean old exams from the professors you currently have and will have to take tests with. So why am I about to sing Save the Last Dance for Me? Just wanted to prove I could sing. If you know anything about us at Seven Sage, you know that here we at Seven Sage love real exams, at least to practice with. Now for our LSAT course, there are many years of past real LSAT exams that are used as the foundation of practicing in the Seven Sage LSAT prep course. Fewer such exams are available for any given professor. I'm normally a professor that teaches a 1L course only has one exam a year. Many of them make very few exams available, and some jackasses just don't give them out at all. So what do you do with old exams of current professors? It's in explaining this that we'll get to the point about why you need to save real practice exams from that professor for last. Well, with the old exams, you're going to give a glance at the beginning of the semester, and this is to get a preview of the professor's mind so that you see where is the course is going? The syllabus will tell you that a little bit, but the exam will tell you that a little bit more. So it's a move in the master the professor part of the triad of our course, master the law, master issue spotting, and master the professor. But you also need to save at least three practice exams for the last two weeks. And this is a sort of different master the professor move. Uh, why is that? You notice our rule of thumb is that you should save three real, let's amend this again, save three real old practice exams for the end. Notice this assumes that you're going to take more than three practice exams in prepping for any given class. Actually, we really think that it's absolutely necessary if you want to come close to guaranteeing that you're going to get an A. Many students in your class will take at least three practice exams in any given class for a given professor. And if you follow our method, you'll have started taking practice exams quite a bit earlier than your classmates. You want to save three at the end for two reasons. If you're taking other practice exams that are not written by your professor, that will help you exercise the general issue spotting muscle. But closer to the actual exam, you need to start to tune into your professor's frequency. So here's you, and here are your enormous Alfred E. Newman bat ears. And here's your prof drinking Starbucks and reading The New Yorker on his first generation Kindle. And you want to read the signals that are being sent from the professor's head very precisely. If you have other practice exams on the mind other than the professor's, oops, radar's blocked. You really want to get completely in that professor's head. And to do that, you want to really hone in on the few practice exams that that professor's given out. You also want to wait until you're at something closer to peak performance before taking a given professor's real old practice exams. Remember that we have this pyramid. You start with master the law. You then move on to master issue spotting because that's built on a knowledge of the black letter law so that you could actually do issue spotting. And then you get to master the professor, which is built on these two. Do you want your nice smooth pyramid to actually look like a messed up ziggurat as you're trying to develop your issue spotting muscle while you're trying to learn to read your professor? No, you want a nice smooth pyramid built like this. You already want to have pretty good issue spotting muscles before you tackle this professor's exams so that you can really squeeze out all the subtleties of that professor's views. But why three? Well, this gives you a chance to begin to make mistakes, the beginning ones, and still have one or two to get better on before you take the final exam. But what this means is if your professor has substantially more than three practice exams saved up, you might be able to go ahead and just use that professor. So if it's got six, or seven, or ten, or something like that, then go ahead and only use that professor's exams to practice, perhaps saving the later years for last. If your professor's got close to three, practice with another professor's exams. And if you've got one or two, really save those <laughs> lumps of gold. But in general, I think it's a mistake to take these early when you're still trying to learn 
how to issue spot at all. First comes issue spotting, then you can issue spot the specific professor's exams.